Welcome to the January 13th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair recognizes the attendance and assistance of all our staff members, Jen, Kevin, Alyssa, Mark, Amy, and Susan. And we have a full complement of commissioners tonight. I'd like to remind you guys that uh, for commenting, I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time so that we can avoid speaking over each other. And that votes have to be done by roll call, as you know. So I'm going to call your name, state your name, and your vote, even if you've made the motion or the second. To our public participants, there will be an opportunity for public comment for each hearing. If you'd like to comment on a particular hearing, you may submit any comments or questions via the chat function once that hearing has been opened. At the appropriate time, I will call for the public comments and any submissions will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are posted on the agenda. I'd like to start off thanking all the applicants and engineers and anybody that I don't name for uh, allowing us to continue things last week. As you know, we had to close down uh, the office for COVID protocol. So we appreciate everybody's cooperation. It made things go a lot easier. So thank you for that. All right, first up is to vote minutes, December 16th. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have uh, read the minutes, find them in order, and move their adoption with any possible corrections by my fellow commissioners. Thank you. Pat, second. Okay, Pat, you have something? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I sent a couple of ed edits to Susan um, to incorporate. Okay, so the motion is to incorporate those, so we're good for that. Anybody else have anything? No. All right, we're going to vote the minutes in. Betsy? Bob Felter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Mark? Rudy, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes as corrected. 41216. Next up are minutes for December 29th, 2020. Mr. Chairman, I've read the minutes from December 29th, find them in order, and move their adoption with any potential corrections by my fellow commissioners. I like the way you present that. Pat and second. <laughs> okay, does anybody have anything they want to throw in there? All right, we're going to vote them in. Betsy. Wadfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Rudy, aye. Maury. Harlow Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes of 1229. Next up. Minutes, January 6, 2021. Mr. Chairman, I have read the minutes from the December, I'm sorry, January 6th. Uh, I find them substantially correct, move their adoption with any possible changes suggested by my fellow commissioners. Pat and second. Excellent, I see a pattern here. All right. <laughs> Anybody have anything that we wanna throw in there? All right, we're gonna vote them in. Betsy. What felt dry. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Rudy, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. Thank you. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes of 1 6. 
Next up, request for a continuance under a notice of intent. Lynn Riley, zero, Gail Avenue, assessor's map 40 dash 12 parcel lot 040000 East Falmouth, Mass for permission to construct a single family dwelling to install native plantings and to perform all associated clearing, grading and landscaping. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until January 27th. Bird, so move. Carla Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until January 27. These are uh, Betsy. Glad to Ryan. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Mark. Rudy, I. Maury. Carlo Hawks, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. This hearing has continued until January 27th. 20, yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think the next two are a bit uh, mislabeled. RDAs? Yes. I just noticed that. I think the 85 Green Pond is a request for a continuance. Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. And then the next. Oh, no, they're continuing. I'm sorry. From the sixth. I'm sorry. My, my, my bad. Sorry. Okay. I forgot about the January 6th uh, here. Yeah. Well, that's the verbiage joint. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. All right. Next up are requests for determination of applicability. First up, John M. Liam Bruno, 85 Green Pond Road, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove 11 trees overhanging the home and to prune an additional tree. Kevin. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Newton, Steph, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Carla Hawk, second. Okay. Any comments? All right. Betsy. Gladfeld, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Mark. Rudy, I. Maury. Carlo Hawks, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Steve. Pat, and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. You know what's amazing is the two Kevins know which one is is up at at the. Yeah. We're both psychic. All right. Yes, you are. Psycho. Yep. Continued request for determination of applicability. First up, Victor E. Calcaterra and Mary L. Scanlon, trustees, 24 Shaker Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to add a second floor dormer and an enclosed entry with a stoop. To remove a bay window, to remove a stoop and a step to upgrade to a Title V sewage disposal system and to install 45 square feet of mitigation plantings. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Hello, Hawk, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Well, I felt right. <clears throat> Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Rudy, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up. Kathleen Roush, trustee, 200 Mill Road, Falmouth, Mass. 
for permission to raise R-A-Z-E, an existing garage, to construct a new garage with an expanded second floor, to construct a second floor deck, to construct a porch addition, to reconstruct a walkway in kind, and to remove one tree. Mr. Newton. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard. So move. Carlo Hawk, second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Heard. Aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Rooney, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, 86 Water Street, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission to conduct soil borings and utilize test pits. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource error boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. Arlo Hawk, second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. All right, Betsy. Uh, I'm recusing myself from this vote. I'm sorry, I should have known that. Okay, Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Rudy, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Aye. Is unanimous? Aye. Uh, I got you. Um, with one recusal. So we have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Elizabeth Stanberry, 154 Alder Lane, North Falmouth, Mass, for permission to replace an existing deck within the existing footprint. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. Walsh, second. Thank you. All right. We'll take the vote. Betsy? Glad felt aye. Courtney? Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Mark? Pretty aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, William T. and Joan F. Bredis, 14 Pennsylvania Avenue, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to upgrade to a new Title V septic system. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under both the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Carlo Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Rooney, aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat. Yes, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Robert T. Davis, trustee of 32 Emerson Road Trust, 32 Emerson Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to upgrade to a new Title V sewage disposal system. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Carlo Hawk, second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. All right, Betsy. Love well, both aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Mark. Rooney aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Patton aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up are requests for hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. All right, first up, Lucius and Wendy Hill, zero, Nashawina Street, Assessor's Map, 2420, Parcel Lot, 001, 000, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to install a three foot wide elevated walkway to an existing licensed ramp and float. And for the record, Correct me if I'm wrong, Maury. Maury is recusing from this hearing. Thank you, Amy. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, I have promoted Mike Borselli up as a panelist to present the project. Excellent. Good evening, Mr. Borselli. We're ready when you are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, with your permission, I'll share my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, I represent the applicant, uh, Lucius and Wendy Hill, property owners of this parcel, known as Parcel 1. Uh, it is directly across the street from this um, home at number 75 Nashawina Street. Uh, there's an existing uh, licensed ramp and float on the property. Um, by property, I mean the property on the opposite side of Nashawina Street. Uh, it has water frontage on West Falmouth Harbor. It's in the very upper reaches of West Falmouth Harbor. There's an existing six by 16 float, a ramp, um, stonework, and a concrete uh, platform that um, it's really a slab that the ramp uh, is affixed to. Um, there is a uh, salt marsh system on the north and south of the property. Um, there's some salt marsh area here. There's an existing grass path that is the access to the existing concrete uh, slab and then the existing ramp and then the float. Uh, I have that in uh, profile view here. If you you can see uh, in profile the existing uh, concrete slab that's also supported by uh, stonework. Existing ramp and float are here. <clears throat> um, there's a, I think I mentioned there's a salt marsh. The, the property is also uh, located in land subject to coastal storm flowage. There's a boundary actually across the street. Uh, uh, VE18 interfacing with AE15. Um, the applicant's proposing to do a very simple thing. That is um, make access to the ramp and flow easier by install, uh, installing seasonal aluminum sections of an elevated walkway. Uh, two of which would be fastened to the existing slab and they would bridge over the slab. Um, uh, and then two would be um, fastened by um, pipes and helical anchors that would be drilled into the ground. These helical anchors are two inch diameter, effectively very small pilings. Um, and there's a lightweight um, sections of aluminum what this will allow is for uh, easier access to the uh, rampant float. Um, by easier access, I mean um, over the years, the uh, 
property owners have observed and uh, dealt with um, higher tides and uh, water levels appear to be higher at the access point to the pier and ramp and float so that <clears throat> probably about 50% of the high tides, the access point is inundated with water and that depending on the height, height of the tide, it can vary from a few inches to over a foot. Um, I, we met with Jen on site uh, late, late summer during one of the higher tides to meet her about the project, but to also demonstrate the situation and why um, the applicant was hopeful that he could install these temporary uh, seasonal sections so that he could then walk directly to the dock, not through the water when tides were higher. Um, we also believe based on um, our observations that this path that is really grass, um, it still has the peat layer for a salt marsh. And the salt marsh vegetation um, has, has been uh, eliminated in the path just because of foot traffic. So there's a section here where you know, the typical salt marsh vegetation is not there, but if you walk on it, it's, it supports foot traffic, but if you, if you like, if you stomp on it, you get that sort of hollow sound of a peat shelf. So um, we believe that there's a benefit to installing these uh, sections because then the uh, salt marsh could recover and, and grow back. In fact, we could, encourage that by planting um, plugs of salt marsh if that's something that um, you thought was uh, appropriate. Um, so the work is relatively simple. It would be, access would be from the path. There'd be a, a, a mini excavator would install it, uh, four helicals. The, the sections are three by 12. They're lightweight and can be removed seasonally and they would be removed seasonally at the time that the ramp and float are removed. Um, they could be removed um, periodically if there's a threat of a hurricane. Um, and they would be stored in the upland outside of the velocity zone across the street at the property owned by the applicant. Uh, we reviewed the staff report and there was a specific um, comment about um, a prohibition against docks in FEMA designated velocity zones. Uh, we, we knew this may come up, um, which is one of the reasons we met with Jen on site. I wanted Jen to go over the project with uh, myself and my, uh, my client so that he could hear firsthand uh, potential issues and concerns. And Jen clearly raised the concern of this be considered a dock in a velocity zone. Um, and it might be something that is problematic, but she could all, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, Jen, so correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but there also might be some benefits that could be weighed against the provisions that prevent docks and velocity zones. <clears throat> um, in addition to that, um, I think a, the, the strict definition of a dock, this is not a dock. What we're proposing is an access way to the dock. And why I say that is because the dock in this case is a, is a solid stone and concrete structure with a ramp fixed to it with a float attached to the ramp. And in all of those things are the working portion of the dock. In fact, mean high water uh, goes around the fixed structure so that where we're proposing the seasonal sections is um, uh, land would have mean high water. So it's an access to the dock. The dock already exists. So I don't know if that's semantics, but I point this out in hopes that it can persuade you to allow these seasonal removable sections to be installed to simply gain better access to the license ramp and flow. That pretty much sums it up. I'm um, happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Mike. Jen, do you want to start? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. A couple of things. Mike, is the are the um, 
the walkway is going to actually be attached to that ramp though, right? Um, right. I'm going to, uh, as shown on your plan. If you look at the profile, um, the walkway sections will be affixed to the concrete slab or they'll be affixed to the heel glankers right where the ramp connects. It will connect. There'll be a hinge point. Okay. Just, that's the only connection to the ramp. Yes. And I'm not, I don't mean to beat you up, but it's, it's, it's not semantics. It's, it's actually going to be the actual dock itself now, as opposed to that concrete structure. Um, I mean, just for the board, I mean, the staff reports, you know, basically spells out the regs. So the board needs to decide whether or not they feel this is an extension of the existing dock or not. And if so, it's in a velocity zone. Um, I mean, if there is um, the through flow decking, it will allow that marsh to come back. A couple of things, Mike. Um, just raised uh the it's 36 inches high does it need a railing for that from building or not i don't believe that the code requires it to have a railing. No. okay and is there a did you have a storm kind of plan on if a storm is coming how we're going to remove those quickly yes actually um there's no written plan but um on a seasonal basis and i met with the contractor the contractor in this case is going to be um schultz uh, Chip Schultz, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Carson from um, Schultz, he um, uh, met me on site. We talked about how, you know, the situation uh, would occur in the event of an oncoming hurricane, and he would be the contractor that would remove the sections of the walkway. He would remove the ramp and flow. Um, and they'd be stored in the upland uh, across the street. With all due respect to, to, to Schultz Marine and, and Mr. Carson, he's a busy guy. And every time we ask for a storm plan, everybody says, oh, Ben's going to be in charge of it. So, um, you know, it, it, is it realistic that these things will be removed in a major storm event? And um, is he going to haul them off site? Are they going to be stored somewhere on... Mr. Hill's property across the street or on that property, or they're going to be removed? Um, they'd be stored across the street outside the velocity zone on the part okay. that's not in the velocity zone. Okay. Um, I guess, Mr. Chairman, those are my only comments and, and questions. I'm, I'm going to, I understand the issues out there, but I'm also just going to caution the board that, you know, the, this is, you know, the way it's drawn, it looks like it is going to be an extension of that dock in that velocity zone. So um, those, again, are my only comments and questions, unless Mr. Newton has anything to add. I have no additional comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Chairman, one follow-up. Uh, we can talk to Mr. Carson and we can get a written, we can attempt to get a written uh, contingency plan for the removal. Um, if that's something that the board would want to see, that's one thing we, we, I'm sure we could try to work out. All right. Pat, we're going to start with you. I want to um, refer everybody to the definition of a dock in the regulations at 10.04. Uh, a dock means the entire structure of any pier, wharf, walkway, bulkhead, or float. And it goes on. So I think the definition is pretty straightforward. That this walkway and or dock, however you slice it, is identified as a dock under our regulations. I have no other comments. Thank you. Peter. Uh, no comments at this time. All right. Steve? Thank you. Um, and it's a definitional issue that I need clarity on. If it was a walkway not connected to the dock, is it still practical in the application, Mr. Brazelli, or is it still a dock? Is a duck a duck? 
Technically, we could, I would talk to the contractor, but we could leave the ramp and float as they are. We could make the actual walkway stop three inches from the from the ramp connection and the ramp connection could continue to be connected to the concrete solid structure and you could just step across the three or four inch gap onto the ramp. Um, that's something that we, then it would be a separate independent structure technically. I mean, again, we're getting, we're splitting here. So I don't yeah, mean to amazing. be, I don't mean to be, you know, come across as like wise about it, but that you could do that if it were a technicality. Well, I brought it up, so I, I, I guess I'm the wise guy. But anyway, I, I think it's an improvement to the conditions there. They, they have dramatically changed. And those docks are surprisingly old, or at least from my view. So um, they've been there a long time. And the uh, environment has changed dramatically, I think. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Betsy? Um, no questions. You're muted. Um, no, Courtney. Courtney. Bet, Betsy's up. Oh, okay. But she's muted. Or she's talking to herself. Betsy, you're muted. Still <laughs> muted. Hey, Betsy, we're getting bored with this. Sorry, I lost you. Yeah, yeah, no objections. So <laughs> I, I have two comments. One is, um, Steve, I don't think you're a wise guy. I, I think that was uh, an interesting approach. But I would also want to have, um, where are we? Mike, there you are. Mike, everybody got shifted when I got lost. <laughs> Mike. Uh, if that actually, if there actually is Pete there, you you could verify it with a little core. Yes. And I'd like to see what what Jen. It's it appears to be Marsh, Betsy. It, it, it does, but just yep. take a little, just take a little boring to confirm that there's Pete there. That if in fact it wasn't tramped on all through the summertime then uh, Marsh could grow back there. Okay. Anything else? No, I'm afraid that you're gonna lose me again though. I don't know how you <laughs> lost me this time. Oh no. All right, what can I say? <laughs> Just, oh, you all disappeared and I couldn't see anything to click oh, to get back. It's our fault, okay. Courtney. I have no questions. All right. Mike, a couple of points of, of clarification. Um, you, you kept referring to this as seasonal, um, and I believe you said it, but I'm asking for clarification. They would be removed in the off season. Absolutely. The ramp and float are removed by Mr. Carson now in the off season. He would be responsible for the removal of all of it in the off season. Okay. And I'm hoping I can get him to like, or I can provide a contract even if I can. To, to demonstrate he would be responsible in in any events where it needs to be removed. Okay. Um, and did I hear you correctly? Um, you would offer to plant um, some grass? Yes, I would. Um, <clears throat> one aspect of this project that we had originally proposed that we're now not proposing is to do some invasives management. And the reason we pull that out of the application is because some of it was going to be proposed in the right of way of Nashawina Street. So um, Blue Flex Design is handling that. That's why I'm even mentioning this. We'd come back on a separate application for that. But Blue Flex Design uh, is familiar with the site. I'm going to consult with them about whether or not you could do salt marsh plugs. I'm going to also have them uh, do the um, boring to sort of uh, confirm what I, what we felt out there that it's still there is peat there. So both of those things um, I'm going to look into and, and offer at a continued hearing. Okay. And then at the risk of insulting someone, uh, whether the, the the ramps, I'm sorry, the walkway was attached or not 
to me that that is kind of semantics. I'd rather see it attached. It would be safer to the human traffic. Um, the legality aside, but um, so for what that's worth, I think it's a valid point, but that's my two cents. Kevin. Um, I would uh, like to point out that first off, the plugs are a good idea and would be nice to be included. And second, that uh, in the event of a hurricane, one would assume that uh, there'd be some plan in place to take what would be there in any event, that is uh, the float and ramp from the existing point. And uh, they'd just pick up uh, some aluminum sections to go along with it. And they only have to take it across the street. So uh, I would be inclined to go along with it. All right. Mark? I would agree with Kevin, except from the drawing of the, the dock, it looks like a continuous, or the ramp, excuse me. It looks like a continuous piece of structure of wood nailed counted together. I could imagine moving that would be a son of a gun. So making it out of aluminum sections would be a lot easier to move and handle in smaller sections, not wood. Uh, is is there any hint, Mike, of when that dock, current dock was permitted? Uh. I think we submitted the chapter 91 license. Um, it's ancient, um, predates it, 1970s. I'd have to look at the- um, That's enough. I mean, it looks like somebody put a lot of that stone there to protect the dock, but- There's, there's history to this as being some sort of landing um, for, for decades. Yes. So that's sort of irrelevant to, to current things. So the only comment I make is you might want to make it construct the dock a little differently than you show in the plan to make it a little more manageable if you have to move it. Uh, the ramp, excuse me, again, if you have to move it. That's all. Um, I can speak to that. Um, and I, and Mr. Chairman, if I could, I, uh, I apologize for not making it clear, but it is intended to be aluminum sections. It's there's no, it doesn't show the breaks in the aluminum sections and there could be notations on here. I'm calling it out uh, in a way that misleads you, but it, it, I can make it clear on the plan that it's pre-manufactured aluminum sections. Great, thank you. That's good. That's all. Thank you. Um, just Jenny, to make a clarification, something? Mike, your chapter 91 license is dated 2006. Yeah, but it's an M, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a license that, you know, it was an after the fact license. The, the ramp and float and solid structure have been there for a very, very long time. Like, okay. Sure. All right. Anybody have anything else? Jen, is there anything in the, in the uh, public comments? No, Mr. Chairman. Nothing right. in the chat. All right. What's your pleasure, folks? Um, Mike, that's a continuance. Yeah, I would like to request a continuance. I, I failed to mention one other thing, and it was in the staff report, but I apologize for bringing it up. Just so you know, um, I went through this whole exercise in, I think, 2006 or 2008. Eight. 2008. Um, we, we received an order of conditions to do something very simple, similar. In fact, it was more permanent. It wasn't made out of aluminum sections. Uh, an order of conditions was granted to do the work, but the applicant never proceeded with the work. And guess what happened? In 2014, the maps changed. It went from an A zone to a B zone. So uh, I wouldn't be here if the order of conditions that was issued then was executed. Not that that matters. It's just sort of anecdotal additional information. And I would like to request a continuance to um, either February 3rd or if you're meeting on February 10th, whatever makes more sense to you folks, based on your agendas. Either way, Mike, which one do you want? I think I'll take February 10th so I have enough time. Okay. At the request of the applicant, I make a motion to continue to February 10th. 
Bird, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue this hearing until February 10th. Betsy. My poker, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Pretty, aye. Pat. Pat, where are you? Oh, we lose Pat. We've lost her. I think we did. Hope it wasn't something she I said. <laughs> she didn't even say goodbye. All right. Um, Peter. Walsh, hi. Steve. Hi. Um, we have enough to continue this anyway, correct? Sure. Oh. It's more than a quarter. Oh, okay. All right. All right, this hearing is continued until February 10th. Thank you, Mr. Boselli. Thank you. Can't believe we're talking about February already. Well, All right. soon we'll be talking about May and then yeah. the ice. Then we'll take the summer off. That looks like know. she's trying to come back. There, there she, she is. is. There she is. We missed you, Pat. All right. Next up is Gale Avenue. That's been continued. Therefore, next up is Melissa McKim, trustee, <sighs> Nina's Marina Realty Trust, 306 Granton Avenue, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to repair 330 linear feet of an existing licensed bulkhead and stone riprap to install a new timber boardwalk, drainage trench, and native plantings, and to install a new vinyl sheet pile bulkhead adjacent to and directly landward of the existing licensed timber bulkheads. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted Mr. McGrath up um, to present his project. Justin, could you please um, move Mr. Borselli back into the attendees list? He has a hearing later on tonight. Where did Mike go? I promoted him up. Yeah, Mike's here. Good evening. Oh, there he is. Hi, Mike. Oh, good evening. Thank my you, name Justin. is Michael. Mc, uh, my name is Michael McGrath. I'm a registered engineer and professional in I work for Holmes and McGrath, and my firm prepared the notice of intent and the plans that are um, that are the uh, subject of the notice of intent. So uh, I would ask that the uh, uh, I gave the commission four different exhibits. Uh, so I would ask that the commission post the site plan uh, and uh, farm. Mike, okay, Mike, do you want the site plan or do you want your colored exhibits? I will, I'm sorry, I want the colored exhibit site plan. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna share my screen for um, Mr. McGrath. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yep. Mike, which one do you want? Uh, the one on the bottom, uh, that one right there. Okay. Uh, um, the application is for the land at 306 Scranton Avenue. And there exists at that um, parcel of land, an existing house and an existing boat shed. The parcel has frontage on Falmouth and a the harbor. There's a existing uh, 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 licensed bulkhead that's in the shape of a U that's between the existing boat shed and Falmouth and a the harbor. Then there's a short bulkhead that goes about halfway to the north on the frontage. Uh, there are two piers on the uh, existing parcel. The parcel is land that is, uh, I'm sorry, I should have colored it, but there's a velocity zone that cuts 
uh, that cuts through the site. It starts about um, at the northerly end of the uh, uh, project. Uh, it's about a third of the way up from the uh, um, uh, from the harbor towards the street, and then it goes in a regular line and goes through the most southwesterly corner. Uh, there's an existing house and existing boat shed. What the proposal for is is to reconstruct the uh, waterfront. There's three different um, basic uh, forms of uh, construction that are going to be uh, accomplished on the waterfront. One is we're going to repair a riprap that's at the south easterly corner. I put an arrow on it. Then there is a U-shaped um, projection of land, and I show a cross-section BB, and that's a slightly different type of uh, cross-section that I'll describe. Then there is a, another section, CC. In the area of CC, there is supposed to be some plants planted, but every time he's planted the plants, salt water has come in and destroyed the plants. So we're going to actually raise the seawall in CC in order to get a little bit of, uh, um, well, basically a little protection from common flooding. And he stands ready to put these plants in. So if we could now switch to the next section, uh, I could then describe each section. Could I have the next, or do I have control of it? No, I do not have control of it. Could I have the next section, please? Yes, this is a cross section. Oh, this is a cross section of the riprap. And I showed dotted the old riprap, and then there's the new riprap. The new riprap will be built in accordance with the Army Corps of Engineers guidance on how to, how to ins, uh, furnish and install um, riprap. There's a toll stone that's going to be set. Um, much deeper than the existing. So it, um, the reason we do that is that historically, um, riprap settles from the weight and also from erosion. So in any case, this is a brand new uh, cross section. We put down filter cloth and then crushed stone, and then we're building the new riprap. So that's only in one small corner of the site. Um, the next section, if I kind of the next section is the, uh, is a portion of the bulkhead. This is called CC, and this is actually in front of the house, not in front of the um, uh, big boat shed. And if you look at this and you, the bulkhead is taller. It's taller by about a foot. And the reason it is, is that they have had, uh, they've tried to plant required plants and they have been consistently killed by the salt water. By adding a foot, they hope to have enough, um, basically, uh, uh, en enough increase in the site that the wetland plants will survive. Uh, and I, could I have the other section, section BB, please? Yeah, this is the section that is in the big U shape and there's going to be a boardwalk all the way around it. Plus, um, landward, there's a leaching trench. And the point of the leaching trench is to, um, is what we're going to do is, what we're going to basically, um, the new riprap wall will be waterproof. What we're actually doing is driving sheathing, plastic sheathing behind the riprap. In order to do that, we excavate down and expose the tie rods. We actually cut the tie rods. We drive the sheathing and then we drive or install a new tie rod and weld it to the old tie rod. And there's two tie rods here shown. So there is excavation that's going to occur. When we're done with the excavation, we put in this leaching trench. This leaching trench is 18 inches of sand. And what it does, it, it reduces uh, what they call five-day biochemical oxygen demand and total suspended solids. That is, it removes some of the organic matter that might drain into it. And at the bottom of it, there is a pipe, an overflow pipe that allows the uh, treated water that flows through the sand filter 
to go out and uh, basically be surface discharged into the uh, uh, harbor. There's also a new walkway that was showing there, a new boardwalk. Um, so uh, we're using the same construction technique if we go back to CC, where we're not taking out the sheathing. We're driving new uh, plastic sheathing. Uh, it's, it's a composite, not plastic, driven in behind the bulkhead. In order to do that, we have to dig down and, and basically remove the uh, tie rod. Then they, when they, um, after they install the plastic sheathing, they, um, they basically put a new tie rod in and weld it to the old tie rod. So this is actually going to basically reinforce the, um, the uh, wall without moving the bulkhead um, towards the water. We did get a comment from the Division of Fisheries. They wanted the, they had three conditions they recommended that you adopt. One is the uh, uh, reconstruction of the bulkhead should be in limit to the footprint of the existing structure it is. It also calls for appropriate containment techniques should be used to prevent construction debris, storm water runoff and loose sediments from entering the marine environment during construction. Um, what that, uh, what we did nearby in the town of Falmouth is we actually put a floating barrier in. Um, uh, so that is, um, I mean, that is a suitable condition that you would say that we have to submit something similar to what, what we did in the town of Falmouth. Um, the floating barrier was held up in place by um, uh, ball uh, great big balls. They were probably every, uh, I don't know, they are probably every eight feet. And there was a filter cloth that went down to the base and it caught um, um, any debris. It was, well, it was not quite filter cloth. It was just some um, netting with very, very small openings. And the third thing they say is fuel spills from refueling and construction equipment would be adversely affect resources. And they say that um, we should either review offsite or provide significant adequate containment and cleanup ma materials should be required to minimize our uh, impacts. There will be a crane here. It'll be, um, um, there's at least a week's worth of work. What we can do is bring the crane up closest possible to Scranton Avenue and we can surround the crane with um, basically um, these tubes that would uh, um, trap any uh, contamination. So I think those, I think that you can issue an order with those things appropriately conditioned. So I stand ready to answer any questions you might have concerning the proposed work. Sorry, I was on mute. Jen, do you want to start? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mike, you described the boom. Is there a way you could show it on a plan? I mean, we don't have to continue it, but is there a way you could put the boom location on the plan for me? Yes, I've done a couple of booms before that you've accepted. So okay. I, will, I will send in a plan of the booms. Okay. Um, and a maintenance schedule for the trench drain, if I missed that, sorry. Oh, I have not prepared a maintenance schedule, but I, I have done them before, so I will send in a maintenance schedule. Okay. And can you clarify, like the staff report says, can you clarify the area of the previously approved mitigation? Because staff went out there and it looks like there's some gravel, there's some plantings, there's some other plantings. Um, there was a condition that there'd be uh, vegetation planted on, uh, if, if we could go back to that plan, um, you want me to put it up, Mike? Yeah, please. The site plan. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, 
where CC is, there is there was required plantings. And if you go out there, it's nothing but gravel. And what I was told by the contractors, he put the plants in twice, but they were killed by salt water overtopping the um, the uh, bulkhead. That's why we're raising it a foot. I will, if you want, I could easily clarify that by basically preparing a uh, detail that shows that area and the plants. That would be helpful, Mike, only because there's about three or four amendments to this original project yes. and mitigation keeps shifting. Uh, do you mind if I stop sharing now? No, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, so it's kind of really hard to figure out where the mitigation was supposed to be. It kept shifting. So just some clarification on that would be helpful for the staff. I understood. I mean, they really looked at the old plans, but again, it's 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 a little squirrely. So some clarification on where those plants should be would be helpful. Understood. Thank you. Um, and the only other comment we had is when the staff went out there, everything is being trimmed to a uniform height. Um, plants don't grow like that. They don't die back like that. So they're obviously being managed. And I know for a fact, all of the old orders of conditions and amendments say they should grow into their full and mature form. So why aren't they, Mike? Well, I went out there and I looked at the plants. And if we can go back to the, uh, uh, to the Back plan to the of the plan. site. Um, if we could bring that I'm up. Getting, I'm getting there, Mike. Yeah, I understand. Over here where it says native plantings. Yes, there. what happens if there is a complete roll, I'm saying roll, R-O-W, of um, basically bayberry. And what's happened is the top of the bayberries has been trimmed back. Now, what are uh, trimmed down? When you look at what the goals of the resource area buffers, one is to create uh, uh, a buffer between manned activities and the wetland. The second one is to reduce runoff. The third one is to reduce nitrogen pollution and other pollution from nutrients. The, the next goal is to filter out suspended solids, then it's wildlife habitat, and then essential habitat from uh, Finesting. When I look at that, um, that those plants, and I would invite the commission to look at the plants, the plants have, have been, there's no question they've been trimmed. Therefore, they're very, very dense. Um, and I looked at it that that buffer is doing what you want in that it creates a, uh, it creates the buffer. If you look, there's no runoff getting past it. It's built on a uh, bed so there is a reduction of runoff and pollution. The, the bed is, is flat, but you can see that no water is getting beyond it. And it is filtering out the solids. And the dense um, bushes do provide a very good habitat for uh, nesting birds. Um, the other thing that happens is if, if if we go back, can we go go back one more time? Um, this to the plan because this site is um, um, uh, there's the plan, Mike. Yeah, this house is worth millions upon millions of dollars. If you go to that site and you say that you want those those shrubs to grow up and block his view, uh, he's going to suffer damages. It, or I'm sorry, a reduced mm -hmm. value of that structure in a, in a, in a tune of uh, millions of dollars, two or three millions of dollars could easily be lost in uh, valuation that, and if that happens, obviously there would be an adjustment to his tax bill. So what you ought to do is go out and look at it because it, as far as I'm concerned, the buffer is doing what you want it to do. And there is a provision that you can allow or Buffers to be um, this to to be reach a certain um, height, and I think it's appropriate you look at that and decide for yourself. Uh, I'm telling you that uh, if 
if you go out there and you block his his view, uh, there's going to be a substantial loss in the value. Uh, when I look at this, this is found within a harbor, and um, bottom line is I think that the the buffer is doing what you want, even if you think it should be taller. I, I would ask the commission to accept the buffer as it exists. <clears throat> wow. That's all I have to say, Mike, is wow. Um, I don't even know how I'm going to address that one. So instead of your client asking the commission permission to trim his buffer, you're blaming the commission that we're going to lose millions of tax dollars if we if we don't let him trim his buffer is pretty much what you're saying. Okay, what I'm saying, this is the last time I share a plan for you, Mike. The last time I help you out. No. What um, do I okay, do Mr. Chairman. Look? Because what the, what the client and I discussed is he said, if I lose this view, I've paid millions upon millions of dollars here. And if I lose the view, then the value of this is gone down. So you need to go. Well, why doesn't your client can request from the commission to, you know, trim his plants instead of violating the last, let's say there were three amendments, one original. So the last four orders of conditions on this site. Mike, you have a very large project here. Don't get bogged down in the, in the bushes. It's an observation. The board can address it. Um, other than that, Mr. Chairman, the staff doesn't have any questions or comments. All right. Mr. Newton, do you have anything you want to add? I don't, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's Commission see. comments. Betsy. I have no comments. Oh, I Gordon. do have a comment. This isn't the appropriate forum <clears throat> to discuss the height of of plants. And I could talk to I could talk to Mike and give him a, give him an explanation of why plants are allowed to grow to their full and uh, mature form, but this is not the appropriate uh, forum. The appropriate forum, if Mike's client has an issue with this, is to talk to Jen as to how to resolve this issue. All right. Oh, I do. I do have a comment. Is there oh. a DMF letter? Yes. Okay, that's okay. That's that's all I want in case there's a I, I, time of year. I addressed the DMF letter. Yes, oh, Mike and Mike did address the DMF letter. We do have one. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. No, there's no, no time of year restriction. Okay. Can I proceed? Yep, I'm done. Thank you, Jamie. Perfect. Courtney. I have no comments. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. Mark? I have no comments. Thank you. Maury? I just had one comment. Um, the I know Jen asked about the maintenance on the trench drain and that it's going to direct discharge afterwards into the harbor. Um, I was just curious why we're not... He has so much lawn area um, to the west um, that he could put easily put some drywalls in there instead of direct direct discharge. I think the whole idea of the trench drain is great, but I mean, it's basically, I don't know how long sand is going to filter and what the maintenance, I didn't see the maintenance program for the trench drain. So I'm sorry, there could be that every year they clean out the contaminated sand or whatever, but, um, you know, that's that that site, I've been on this board for a long time and I've been on the commission when this has been permitted and amended and amended and amended. It's a very um, aggressively developed lot. It has 950 square feet only of mitigation planting, which I'm glad to see that they are going to try and, well, they're redoing work, so they have to fix their mitigation planting. Um, but the direct discharge just i was i was just kind of curious we've never allowed 
a pipe to go directly into the harbor. So that's the only comment I had. And I think it's a very heavily developed site with 950 square feet of mitigation and that's all that's on it. Uh, wait, wait I'm, there's more than that because if you go and look at the plan, there's a very substantial portion that's uh, northeast of the house. It's more than 900 square feet. Well, it doesn't show it on our plan. The area being trimmed. Well, I guess that's, in, but it doesn't say on, at least on my plan, maybe I'm missing it. It doesn't say mitigation planting up there where it's all being trimmed. I only have two areas by the bulkhead that's being redone and elevated. That say mitigation well, planting. Maury, it's, it's labeled native plantings. That's why I've asked Mike to uh, kind of clarify on the on his next plan which areas were mitigation. So okay. if you want me to share the plan again, it's it's like Mike said, north of the house. It, it says native plantings, and it runs all the way almost to the road. Okay, that area. Okay. But that's actually oh. actually mitigation plannings from a prior project. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I can clarify it was, that for there, us. There was the voluntarily um, he voluntarily put a whole row of uh, cedar trees to block, you know, <laughs> to the north. So that the whole his neighbor very substantial now cedar tree. So. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. All righty. So, no comments. Peter? I just agree with Betsy. <laughs> All right, Steve. Comments, thank you. All right, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Uh, it seems appropriate to ask for a continuance so that I can address the issues that have been brought up. Okay. How much time are you going to need, Mike? Um, 27th, the 3rd, or the 10th? About the 10th. Okay. That's the 10th of February. Correct. Chair, at the request of the applicant, I move that we continue this to February 10. Carlo Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this till February 10th. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Goody, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Aye. Peter? Aye. Steve? Patton, aye. It is unanimous. This hearing is continued until February 10th. Thank you, Mr. McGrath. Thank you very much. Everybody stay safe. You as well. Thank you. Good night, Mike. Bye. All right. Next up. Oh, we lost Pat again. John D. Mitchell, 340 Scranton Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to reconstruct an existing licensed pier. Uh, Jenna, looks like we lost Pat again. Hopefully she must be having terrible. problems tonight. She'll pop back up. She's been popping yeah. in. Um, I just promoted Mike Borselli as a panelist um, to present the project, and Mike. To answer your text, yes, I did. I'll address that. Thank you. Okay, yep. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, for the record, my name is Michael Borselli, representing the applicant, John Mitchell. With your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'll share my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mitchell owns the property at 340 Scranton Ave. Uh, there's an existing single family dwelling, landscaping, uh, stone uh, riprap uh, and an existing licensed dock on uh, Falmouth Inner Harbor. 
uh, resources areas of note are land under the ocean, land subject to coastal storm flowage, and coastal bank. It's a man-made riprap, but it does meet the definition of coastal bank. Um, this is um, land subject to coastal storm flowage, and this is, in fact, a velocity zone. Uh, the, the entire property is within VE15. Uh, the existing dock uh, has a Chapter 91 license from 1945. Uh, <laughs> it was provided. Um, it was intended to be attached to the narrative. It wasn't, but it was subsequently provided when staff inquired about the license. The license allowed for a six foot wide uh, fixed pier that terminated at an, I'm sorry, an eight foot wide fixed pier that terminated at a eight foot wide by 40 foot long um, T. Um, the applicant's proposing to uh, reconstruct this. It is um, in a state of decline. I wouldn't say state of disrepair, but it's clear that several of the pilings uh, have failed. <clears throat> the one to the north, East here is basically not connected to the bottom. It's there, all of the pilings are uh, creosote. Um, the, the cross members and timbers are creosote. The, the creosote is effectively not performing now because it's so old. <clears throat> I have um, shown the uh, existing pilings uh, hollow, if that's the right word, uh, here's an existing piling, as opposed to a proposed piling that's solid. Uh, we've, we've designed this to be within the same footprint, but actually slightly smaller in size. The inside uh, width from the inside of pile to inside pile has been re reduced, I think, by about, uh, the overall width has been re reduced from um, six feet to seven feet instead of the overall eight foot width. The uh, pile, the number of pilings has been reduced. You can see that they're, they're about every seven foot on center. So there were, there were 20, there are 20 and we've reduced that to uh, 16. Um, the water depths are shown where the boat would tie, the boat would tie on this seaward face. It's a larger vessel. There's uh, more than three feet of water at a low tide on the, on the seaward face of the T. Obviously this structure doesn't meet any of your current standards. For that matter, it couldn't have been approved even in, it would never have been approved in a velocity zone. Um, no wishes to maintain its size. He bought the property because of the size of the dock and it could accommodate his larger boat and it'll be built um, with substantial uh, structural members uh, to allow for that. And there's a standard cross section. All of the material is three by stock instead of two by stock. Um, uh, there's also a profile how it connects to shore, uh, which is the same as how it connects today. Um, I went over this with the harbor master, and the harbor master uh, commented by email, and that was also shared with uh, staff. Uh, it doesn't project out into the harbor any further than it currently does. <clears throat> um, it would be piles will be driven, not jetted. Um, standard standard uh, construction. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mike. Ken. Can you muted? Sorry about that. Um, no, I think the only question or comment we had was um, just to um, confirm that it was in the same configuration as the chapter 91. Mike provided that. So that's all we had. Thank you, Mike. Yep. Excellent. All right. Kevin, we're going to start with you. Uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mark. I have no comments. Looks good. Maury. Just two. Is it time of year restrictions, Jen, on this? Um, 
I don't remember seeing the DMF. Mike, did you? I was just thinking the same thing. I haven't seen a DMF. I haven't seen a DMF. Mike, would you, thank you, Maura, would you, um, would you accept any of the time of year restrictions DMF puts on the plans if we receive those? I don't think I'd be successful not accepting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would Good have. Good answer, Mike. Good answer. Thank you. And then the only other thing, um, it's just a, a small thing, land containing shellfish. Um, if you just put them on the plan, it just makes it straightforward. Thank sure. You. I can submit a revised plan that has that on there. That's all. It was a good project. Thank you, Mike. That. Thank you. Thank you. And you forgot land containing shellfish on the other one, too. <laughs> There's always you something. always miss that resource area. I will, I will make a note of it on both of them. Thank you. That was a virtual slap on the wrist. That's okay. That's it didn't hurt. <laughs> and it's safe. Pat. <laughs> Pat. No comments. All right, Peter. No comment. Steve. No comments. Betsy. No comments. Courtney. Um, other than the comments uh, made already, and in keeping with the spirit and uh, of the day, this was an unimpeachable presentation. Thank you. Uh, all right. And is there any um, public chat comments? No, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second. To close this hearing, Betsy. Glad felt her eye. Courtney. Bird eye. Matthew's eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Mark. Rudy eye. Maury. Hello, Hawks eye. Pat. Harris eye. Peter. Walsh eye. Steve. Pat and I think. It is unanimous. This hearing is closed. Thank you, Mr. Boselli. Thank you. Good. All right. Who did we lose? We didn't lose anybody. Next One up, second, Mr. Here. Chairman. Justin, can you please um, move Mr. Boselli back to attendees? He still has another hearing. Thank you, Justin. All right. Yep, all set, Mr. Chairman. All right, continued hearing under a notice of intent. Scott Dravis, BRI Americas, 45 Surf Drive, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a pool and spa area to install a perimeter pool fence and to expand an existing concrete pool patio and I have two that blend together. That is the end of my verbiage. Oops, so, sorry Jen. About that. that one should not be on here. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted Matt Crichton up from BSC Group to present the project. Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, Matt Crichton, BSC you? Group. Oh, excellent. Uh, representing uh, VRI uh, for the proposed project. Uh, Jen, do you want me to share my screen or do you want to bring up a plan real quick? No, you can share your screen, Matt, please, if you don't mind. I can. Thank you. Sure. Make it easier. There we go. Uh, so the proposed project is essentially an expansion of the existing pool area. Um, what we're looking to do is, <coughs> excuse me, put in a new kiddie pool. Uh, which would be about a 15 by 15 foot, uh, install a spa that's 12 by 15 feet, and then expand the existing patio. Um, right now it's 60 by 42 around the existing pool, and we'd be looking to expand it to 65 by 70 uh, to fit in the new um, spa and, and proposed kiddie pool area. And then um, obviously for safety reasons, we would wanna expand the existing fence around uh, the outside of this new area. 
Uh, the project does fall within land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, and there is um, kind of a weird coastal dune across Thomas Lane there um, that we're, we're in the buffer too. Uh, it's kind of like a privet hedge that's building up a dune over there essentially. So uh, we are proposing the work in the 50 to 100 foot buffer. However, we're proposing the uh, restoration, a lot of that restoration within the zero to 50 along the edge of the property there. Um, within the mitigation area, uh, we are proposing a rain garden um, to help with the infiltration and stuff like that. We thought it would be a good uh, solution from a stormwater standpoint, but also a good environmental solution um, given the site and everything else. It just seemed to seem to work out. So we're required to have 3,148 square feet uh, mitigation. We propose 3,150. Uh, the rain garden itself is 1,013 square feet. Um, really nothing overly creative about this one. Uh, it's just a little expansion area, but I'll be happy to take questions. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Of course. Jen, do you want to begin? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Matt was very responsive to the staff report. So we've already received, I believe, Matt, a revised plan for the planting. And um, I believe that Alyssa sent you all the clarification on uh, the um, our comments on the bioretention area. So she forwarded that to you, I believe, this afternoon. Oops. Yep, so we swapped out the, the yep. two plants that we had, um, that you guys had listed, uh, Bear Berry and the Comptonia Peregrina, the um, sweet fern. Um, and then we did take out, sometimes you remember the Latin, sometimes you remember the cup. Um, so we did take out the, any language for fertilizers or anything like that. It was kind of a, it's, a, it's our engineer's standard, you know, kind of format thing. And I asked him to wipe it all out. So no pesticides, no fertilizers, no herbicides would be needed. And no, I think he had mowing in there, but there's there was no mowing this <laughs> we're not going to mow the mitigation area i promise um so we did take the language out and i think we addressed everything um jen that was in the reports and if there's yes something you that did. we missed then we can you know we can certainly augment no my, matt you did you were, you were very responsive so thank you for that Alyssa's saying yep she did forward it to the board um again we just more, we knew you were going to pick up on the whole fertilizer and um, herbicide. Use in that, so we made sure to call that out. And it was a little, um, we just needed clarification on mowing those um, mitigation or the rain garden plants to two inches. I, I don't think the, the the plants that you chose would like that very much. And not big fans. <laughs> um, but other than that, I had gone out with another member of the BSC group earlier, a couple of months ago to review the project. So staff has no additional comments unless Mr. Newton does. No, Mr. Chairman, no additional comments. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Maury, we're gonna start with you. I actually was very impressed with the rain garden for the retention. And when I saw Alyssa's comments on the staff report, which are wonderful, by the way, um, I'm fine. Thank you. Excellent. Pat. No comments. Peter. No comment. Steve. I'm wondering if work's currently underway on this project. Nope. We shouldn't have anything going on over there right now. Well, who's the contractor? Uh, that I don't know. I'm not sure who the contractor is for the for the site work itself. Okay, I don't have any other comments. Steve, right. is there work going on over there? I, it appeared to me. Okay. Betsy? My phone's ringing. I don't have any comments. I'm just wondering whether Matt's in Iceland or Norway. Alaska. <laughs> Courtney. No comments. Kevin. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Mark. 
I guess I look at this in, as a nice list of plants. Uh, we got to assume you're going to use a fair selection of each of them, not just one of all the good ones and a whole smear of the others. In other words, do we need a planting plan for this? The or plant just go to the list. Yeah, no, the plant palette is on the plan with numbers for each plant. So every every plant actually has the quantity that we're going to put out there on the side. So it's not it's not one or two of these and 85 of those. That's not on my plan. <laughs> You're saying that Jen has the plan that has that? Uh, it should be on her plan, yeah. Um, I can bring it up if you want to see it. Well, I just want to make sure you've got something like that. You said you do, so that's fine. That's all. Excellent. Uh, I'd just like to say I like I'd like that that rain garden. I think that's a great concept. And uh, I'd like to reiterate Maury's comment. The staff reports are excellent. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Alyssa. All right. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> I'll move yeah, but Kevin and Alyssa deserve uh, all on, the credit on. for those. No motions yet. Um, do we have any public chat comments? No public chat at this time. Excellent. All right. Colonel Hawks makes a motion to close. Claude Pelter well, second. Excellent. We have a motion and a second to close this hearing. If there's nothing else, Betsy. Claude well, Pelter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. <clears throat> Mark. Good aye. Aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Patton, aye. It is unanimous. This hearing is closed. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. As well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is a typo for Town of Falmouth. So I'm skipping that. Therefore, next is Pinson Hall Builders, 47 Gunning Point Avenue, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise R-A-Z-E, an existing single family dwelling to construct a new single family dwelling supported by concrete piers to install a new Title V sewage disposal system and to install mitigation plantings. Ben? Mr. Chairman, I promoted Mr. Borselli up as a panelist to present, I think it's the last project for the evening. Yes, it is. Thank you. Mike has hit the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. For the record, Mike Borselli, I represent the applicant. Um, it, with your permission, I'll share my screen briefly. Yes, sir. I submitted uh, revised plans. We had our initial hearing and there was some quest questions and comments um, that we addressed with a revised plan that was submitted on December 28th with a cover letter. And it uh, bullet uh, noted the changes and I'll go through those briefly. Uh, the first thing is that um, we, we noted that the beach is uh, owned by Salt Pond Area Bird Sanctuaries. Um, there's a note on the plan um, that portions of the existing landscape walls in close proximity to the proposed house shall be temporarily removed during construction and rebuilt after construction. This section here and a, a small piece of this will have to be removed and then replaced in the same location. Um, there's a note on the plan about these three specific um, cedar trees. I think Commissioner Hollow Hawks suggested, and it was a great suggestion that we look into transplanting these instead of buying nursery stock and group them over here um, with these Eastern red cedar. Um, I put a note that says three existing Eastern Red Cedars to be transplanted if possible to new location. I tried desperately to try to get an arborist to meet me there and they're just completely out straight. I couldn't get them to meet me. So I put the note about transplanting if possible. I would think it would be very appropriate to condition this that 
during the pre-construction meeting, we make arrangements to get an arborist here so that it's just not, you know, a, a, a fait accompli that they're cut and not attempted to be transplanted because as Commissioner Hollow Hawk said, they're more hardy than nursery stock and it would be better to transplant them. I'm, I'm hopeful you'll allow the note on the plant to remain and it's certainly appropriate to have a condition about that. Um, and finally, um, I added a note about um, there being ornamental, there's some ornamentals in this location where we're proposing the very small mitigation area required 200 square feet, I'm sorry, 172 required 200 provided to enhance the buffer. Uh, I had not, re I was not aware there was some hydrangeas here. So the note, the note indicates that the ornamentals will be removed so that the um, natives can be uh, installed right up against the existing native buffer. Um, and the hydrangeas would probably be planted somewhere in the landscape over, over here. And I think that sums it up on the site plan. Um, there was also a request to, um, we, we talked about a reduction in the enclosed space in the bottom of the building to 200 square feet. So the architectural plans have been revised. So there's one section here, 176 square feet. And then the outside rent station is 24. So the two combined is 200 square feet. That's shown on, uh, on, on a few places on this architectural plan. I'm, go I'm gonna quickly scroll through. Um, um, sheet two, it's shown here. Um, that's the enclosed part. Here's the uh, rent station that's 24 square feet. So it totals 200, including the rent station. Here it is again um, from another view. And I think, I think that's the only places other than the first one I showed, which is right here. So I think that sums up the revisions. Uh, I think I addressed our, your, all your issues and concerns and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Mike. Jen? Um, no, I think Mike addressed all of the comments and concerns the staff had at the last hearing. Kevin Newton, anything to add? I do not, thank you very much. All right. Mike, thank you for addressing everything. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like it went right down the list and everyone should be happy. So we're gonna start with Mark. Yeah, everyone should be happy. Well, I, I always have a problem with this 200 square feet thing, but I, I can't see it written anywhere in our regulations or any state regulation. But nonetheless, the idea that Mike went so far as to include the rich station as part of your 200 square feet is really going well beyond, to my mind, the call of duty. So I guess we should ha be happy with that. Um, that's all. Maury. Uh, all set. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Pat? No comments. Peter? All set. Steve? Uh, no comments. Thank you. Betsy? Thanks, Mike. That was very clear. Clearly addressed the comments from the last time. Thank you. Courtney? All is good. All is good. All right. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function? No. All right. We'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, All second. Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing, take it under advisement. There's nothing else. Betsy. Lad Felter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Pretty, aye. Maury. Earl Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. This hearing is closed. Thank you, Mike.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Have a good evening. Good night, Mike. It was well. Mike. All right. Next up, Cyrus Plettner, 18 Seabreeze Lane, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to repair an existing Title V sewage disposal system, construct a new retaining wall, and reconfigure an existing parking area. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm assuming I promoted Jack Landers Colley up as a panelist, as well as Maria Hickey, to present their continued project. Jack, are you with us? Maria? Maria's muted. Maria, we have you're a DC muted. number. Okay. Am I can you hear me now? Yes, we can. I am here. I've okay. enjoyed the entertaining night with everyone's presentations before me. <laughs> Is that Mr. Jack Landers Colley that I promoted up or not? He's muted. Jack, you're muted. Maybe it's a different Jack. Okay, Maria, you're up. Okie dokes. Um, Jack Landers Colley reached out to me and um, asked for my participation on this project. The client has bought the house. Um, Alyssa and I both kind of agreed the house probably should be knocked down, but that's a whole nother story. Um, we, <laughs> did any of you go out there? I'm dying to ask because it's something yeah. like out of the admin's yeah. field. Yeah. It's a little, little creepy. Anywho, um, the comment that I had made was, you know, absolutely. Um, we can clear the area. They need to put in a new septic. I guess the septic system has failed and I and reconfigure the driveway, just move it a little bit. Um, and before we even get to revegetating the area, I looked around and I mean, the, the property is so overgrown with invasive vines and everything. And, you know, I said we'd be doing a disservice if we just replanted this little area without addressing the invasive vines that will quickly overcome the native plantings and choke them out. So we have requested in our proposal to do the invasive species um, removal and replant anywhere that we've um, exposed ground. Um, in the 11th hour that I was pulled into this project to do the planting plan, um, I inadvertently, and thank you, Alyssa, for adding in um, the staff notes, I didn't include um, on the plan that Jack gave me to put in, obviously, the erosion control barriers, that's planting 101, um, but we would do that to make sure that, that we don't have any erosion into the border. Maria, excuse me, yeah. do you have a plan yeah. you want to share? Um, I had sent it, I hand brought it into conservation and okay. emailed the PDF. Okay, Mr. Chairman, um, unfortunately, I assume somebody would be sharing the plan and unfortunately i cannot access the server at this time because the server okay. is for maintenance so i apologize for that apologize that for maria i thought jack was going to be on to share that plan with us let me see if i can find it in my email real quick uh, in the meantime i can basically describe for you it's you know the the entire area around the house um if you had gone out there and a listener and anyone else that went out there can attest, I don't mean to make a joke of it, but you would be afraid to get out of the car and walk the property. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm trying to be polite about this. Okay. So in, in my professional opinion, remove and replace. And, and obviously, you know, you want to put up your construction silt fence, your hay bales, and be responsible. Um, but I, it looks like it's been an illegal dumping site, to be honest with you. I saw like a desk and I was like, <laughs> one of the windows was held open with an axe. It was just like a creepy horror movie. But uh, I, and I don't mean to make light of it, but uh, it was just, I have yeah. to just say it how it is. So basically... 
We're going to remove the non-native invasive vegetation, replant with native shrubs. It's a mix of uh, winterberry, blueberry, clethra, probably some baccarat uh, when we do a manual extraction down as you get near the um, the wet, the isolated wetland. It was impossible for me to even make a site a site determination of what type of soil or anything like that because I would have been lost in those vines and never to come out again. So as we clear them, we'll make the best match for the shrubs for the site conditions, but that's why I included in the little planting key for those shrubs that I just mentioned. Um, I, I believe the applicant had asked for a retaining wall because there is a very sharp, steep hill um, that separates the house from the lower parking area. Um, and that would just be to retain so you don't have any earth sliding down the road. Um, but even the road in itself, is in really, really poor condition. Um, so if you go out there to look at the prod property, I would park out on 28 and walk in. Can I answer any questions? Jen, you're up. No, Mr. Chairman, I apologize for not being able to pull that plan off. I can't get on the server. Um, no, I mean, the staff went out there. I think we, we saw the plan. There was some stuff um, at the original um, site visit that had been corrected. I think the invasive removal is going to be um, beneficial for the property. I, we do think that there should be that 10 foot around the house. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The plants are right up against the house. There should be that 10 foot around the house for maintenance. So we have no problem with that area becoming lawn um, yep. or wood chips, excuse yeah. me, where they would like. Um, but that, that house does need to breathe. Um, yes. Yeah, no landscape fabric. You can use a incredible nope. yep. jute matting and Perfect. get vision control near that wetland and you're all set. Perfect. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Kevin, anything right. to add, Newton? No, I have nothing to add. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. And do we have a DEP number? I believe we do, yes. 4603. Thank you. All right. Um, comments, Betsy. No comments. Courtney. No comment. Kevin. Uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mark. No comments. Maury. No comments. Pat. No comment. Peter. Well, I have a question for Jen. Did the mitigation uh, for the driveway expansion make it to the drawings? And yes, it did. Yep, the, the drawings were separated out from the invasive removal and the new mitigation. Okay, no further comment. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Peter. Steve? Comments, uh, except, of course, we all went to the site. <laughs> what a lovely view <laughs> and, a, and a great drive. You just can't turn around. <clears throat> Jen, is there any public chat comments? Not at this time. All right. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Heard. I'll block a second. Courtney, you're going to be a little faster, man. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else? No, nope, just right. thank That's you so much for your time. Thank you, Maria. All righty. Take care. What happened to Jack, please? Yeah, I will. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Betsy. Glad felt her eye. Courtney. Bird eye. Matthew's eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Mark. Pretty eye. Maury. Hello, Hawk's eye. Pat. RSI. Peter. Walsh. Aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. This hearing is closed.
All right. Next up, request to amend existing order of conditions. Karen Monroe, 26 Ferry Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass DEP 25-4425 to allow for the driveway to be paved instead of gravel and to install a Cape Cod berm, crushed stone apron, and leaching pit. All right. Jen? Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the, the applicant is requesting a continuance until February 3rd when they received the staff reports. When the staff went out, there was um, some additional impervious surface that needs to be calculated. So I want to make sure that's all on this amended. So uh, Mike is asking for February 3rd. Bird, so move. Carlo Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until February 3rd. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mark. Bernie, aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. This hearing is continued until February 3rd. And that's all we have, folks. I have a question. I have all the answers. Okay, well, good. We'll have them. The question is, uh, other than after the 27th of January, have you given us what, what our meetings are in February and March? Um, I can look at that, Betsy, and let the board know, since we now have scheduled a hearing on February third and 10th, I will take a look at the schedule and let you know. I know I promised you guys the 27th and we screwed that up and I apologize, but, um, well, that's all right. We're moving on see you tomorrow and I will, I will talk to Jamie and I'll get a schedule out to you guys. Okay. Yep. We'll do the Perfect. schedule straight through until like I usually do probably about Memorial day. Okay, great. Okay. Yep. Just fill in all because we'll all be on vacation sometime. Hopefully we'll You're be tired. You're on vacation, vacation sooner rather than yes. later, but that's that's good. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Harlow Hawk. All right. Yeah, right. A second. Yeah, all right. Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Mark. Aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Peter, Peter you're muted. muted. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> there right. we go. Peter's an aye. <laughs> Pat and I. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Justin. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next week. Take Jesse. care.